In this episode, Liz and I go on an adventure. With Manatee, we have a taste of Curacao and we go fish spotting. First, this is me, Kim. There is Bart. And here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33 foot sailboat, Tranquility. Last week we said goodbye to our land life and became cruisers again. This means we had to clean a boat after being on the hard for two months with a lot of boat jobs. <laughs> During weekdays, Bart leaves the boat early and when this is not going to daycare, we stay on board and we need to pick up the dinghy from the dinghy dock. And we have a lot of alternatives to get there. Uh, we sometimes ask another cruiser to take us when they go to the dinghy dock. So we can pick up our dinghy or we go to shore and play a bit. But we also have our stuff. And that's a little bit more adventurous, but really, really nice. I put a seat on it so we can use it like a kayak. And listen enjoys it very much. Liz. Where are we going to? What are we going to do? Um, the Brazil boat. Ah, on the sub? Yes. Come. Are you coming? Come. A lift with a dinghy to the dock yeah. is much faster. But we enjoy the ride on the pedalboard. It is a nice yeah. way to go out, even though it is a little inefficient, yeah. because we never leave two things at the dinghy dock. So we bring back the pedalboard before we go out and explore something. short pedal trip to the dinghy dock and the water is calm today. It can be windy over here and then it's a little bit more challenging, a special to pedal back. But that is not what we do. We take the dinghy and put the pedal board behind and go back to the boat with the dinghy. With a toddler you know everything takes more time so before we can jump back in the dinghy to go for a swim for example i have to be patient liz never wants to do it directly she first wants to play on board before we can go out again Today we visit Landhuis Chobo Lobo with Hanna and Andre from Manatee. This is the place where they make the famous blue curacao. I don't fit. <laughs> they build it for Germans. 
yeah. In the distillery, they tell us something about the history of Curacao and how the genuine blue Curacao is made. The Spanish tried to introduce the famous Valencia orange trees on the island, but the hot and dry climate weren't a match. The oranges became bitter and not edible. At some point someone discovered that the peels of the oranges, when dried, smelled really good and contained etheric oils. And after a lot of experimenting, the liquor blue curacao was made. It is still produced in a traditional way and it gets its blue color by dial. At the end of the two we get to taste three different kinds of liquor. And as cherry on top, we can choose a cocktail. We both enjoy doing water activities and especially diving and snorkeling. Whenever we can we go to a beach to enjoy the underwater world. We are really in luck that Liz also enjoys these activities and is able to join us. Her head is always on the water, spotting the fish. That makes it so much fun. Bart has to work for a couple more weeks and most of the days he takes the car. Close to Spanish borders is Caracas Bay. It is a yeah. short walk over there which is doable in the heat and has a nice beach. We go there often to cool off and lose some energy. Another alternative is to take the bus, for example to Willemstad. It is nice to explore it with Liz. She is such an entertainer and there was a stage, so woohoo! Half an hour free entertainment! With a beautiful sunset, <laughs> friends, cold drinks and nice food on the barbecue, I would say a perfect end of the day. Yeah, look, now Kim is in front of the camera, not behind it all the time, eh? <laughs> oh! How does it feel like to be ahead of the camera again? <laughs>
It is weekend, so family time. We got a tip to go to Hacienda Olivia, a restaurant with a nice playground and some animals. Just look at the entrance. That is welcoming. What is that? Ava di Lamunchi. see how it performs. pretty happy with the state of the hill. There is some uh, fouling, especially on the uh, prop speed, click one, or well, the prop speed we had on the, on the propeller. Uh, but we didn't Mama. redo that one. So you see it doesn't last if you take it out of the water. And um, well, there's still pieces of insulated on top of the rudder, uh, which we we're not able to remove there is like a lot of stuff uh, on the paint almost nothing we are very happy with the result and enjoy a nice sunset and call it a day so this morning we woke up with a bit of breeze and it was nice uh, because it was completely calm and flat on uh, Spanish waters this uh, night and that's all because of Hurricane Fiona that's uh, near Dominican Republic now uh, it draws all the wind away from our location and now we've also got some wind shifts so we turned our boat 180 degrees and then this morning we woke up with this beside us um, we are very close to this catamaran. We don't know if our during our 180 turn the the anchor might grab again and um, we might took a little bit of uh, extra meters. But it's strange we come out so close to this catamaran. Sometimes we go and we are two and a half meters apart from each other so that's why we're gonna well re-anchor problem of being at anchor for this long we had the lock on our side just a few hours after we re-anchored, a storm kicked in. This is the first time we experience gust up till 36 knots at anchor. Beautiful weather at Curacao.
So I think what you see is happening here. We talk today about Hurricane Fiona, which is drawing all the wind away from the southern Caribbean. And uh, that means that our wind direction is not from the west anymore, but it's from the south. Um, that's directly from Venezuela and above Venezuela are always thunder clouds forming, or well, a lot of them. And now you see that because of the wind direction south, we get this weather over to Curaçao. So um, the hurricane on top of us is no problem for us. And you might think, well, then there is no wind at all. But in those thunder clouds is also a lot of wind. So we're uh, having a different wind direction now. So our anchor shifts. So everybody here on the Spanish waters is at, uh, at watch and checking how, uh, how things will go. So in front of us, there's a, a small boat already dragged anchor this uh, during the day and uh, there was another neighbor boat who uh, put them back into place it's a boat from a boat from a local and he's uh, on a mooring so probably on a concrete block or a heavy load but it's not that heavy and well thank god there's a small boat out there now and he's checking the boat and i think they're uh, either trying to tow it away or get some extra weights in the water I don't know but it's good that they are uh, with that boat so it won't uh, go dragging upon our boat after a few hours the storm passed by and we were all okay at Spanish waters we were really alert and I really do not like thunderstorms but that is nature sometimes In the next episode, we install some extra solar, go for a night dive and hurricane season is on. Well, this was it. If you have any questions, please let us know. And for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all.